don't go away. Stay tuned. Second Chance Youth Ranch TV with my very special guest, Billy Hubbard, our Daily Operations Director, and Andrew Wyatt, one of our foster dads. You don't want to miss this show. We'll be right back. Hey, welcome to Second Chance Youth Ranch TV. I'm Perry Black, and on this show, not only do we have Billy Hubbard, our daily operations director, without Rachel, <laughs> we also have Andrew Wyatt without his wife. So on this show, we're going to talk a little bit about you, Andrew. We're going to get a little inf information from Billy, and we want to find out about you, where you grew up. Did you grow up? I, based on some of the videos and pictures I see of you, I don't think you've grown up. You're still young, playing games, a uh, paintball specifically. You actually do that uh, competitively. So I did it competitively for about 16 years. Is that? Do you make money doing that? The last four years playing professionally, I did. You did professional paintball. So yes. Wow, sir. that's pretty cool. Mm, it is. They do that on ESPN or somewhere, don't they? They do. Yeah. Um, it used to be on ESPN. I broadcast a lot, and now they do a lot of streaming services. Yeah. So you can go tune in on Go Sports. Yeah. Um, and they air all the current pro events. All right, so tell me, are you are you an Arkansan? I don't notice a southern accent. No, I'm technically a Floridian. A uh, Floridian? So. What are you doing in Arkansas? Everybody's moving to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everyone asks me that. They're like, yeah. why on earth would you move away from Florida? And uh, I've actually lived on both coasts. So I grew up in Florida. When I graduated high school, I moved to Arkansas with my mom. Um, to be with my grandparents, who were, were at one point they were missionaries in Ethiopia. Wow. They were back in the States. They built their home. So I stayed Where there. Where is that? Where did they build their home at? Um, over in Alexander. In Alexander Island. Bryant. Yeah, right so. here. I'll be. And uh, I was in college at UALR for about a year, but I was still actively playing paintball. Yeah. And then I moved back to Florida to continue competing. I met my wife, and then I tried out for a team in California. And we lived in California for four years where I went professional and then had a couple kids. I had my daughter, Annabelle. I had my son, Riley. And then we moved back to Arkansas. But people may wonder, well, why is he on Second Chance Youth Ranch TV? Mm -hmm. It's because you and your wife now are foster parents. Yes, we are. Y'all live at the ranch property out near Perrin, mm -hmm. 300 acres. Any place out there to shoot paintball? Uh, there's plenty out there <laughs> if anyone's willing. Have you got any of the students in uh, foster care shooting paintball? I am trying to get one of them, a 15-year-old kid. He would do really well because yeah. I coach a youth team as well. Yeah. Um, I think it'd be a good outlet for him. Yeah, be cool. So tell me, uh, you grew up in Florida. So where did where is that? Where did you? I mean, I don't know where Florida is. What city? Orlando. Oh gosh, what a <laughs> life! What a life! And uh, you graduated from what school? Uh, Wakaiba High School. Wakaiba. And uh, then you moved to Alexander to be near grandparents. Mm -hmm. And then ended up professional paintball in California. How did you find Second Chance Youth Ranch? Uh, my wife and I, we started going to family church uh, for about six months. Oh, heard... that'll get you. <laughs> yeah, they they yeah. did. They did. Um, you can thank Katie Apple. She uh, pursued my wife and I after one of your services. Um, she yeah. said, hey, you guys are a young couple. You should go to the young uh, couples group upstairs on Sundays. We're like, uh, Katie Apple, married to Chris. Chris yep. owns Arkansas Pro Wash. So if anything steam cleaned or power washed, he's the man. Yes. Yep. And uh, Katie was adopted. Okay. And uh, they've also adopted her and Chris. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Am they I did, right? They, you're correct. They're, they adopted one of our children out yeah. of foster care, and they're a ther therapeutic foster home currently now. Yeah. Uh, the one they, uh, the young lady they adopted, can we give her name now since she's adopted? Sure. She's, her name is Taylor? Taylor. Uh -huh. And she lives in Fort Smith now. Mm -hmm. She's a young adult, probably 22 or 3. Probably so, yes, sir. Went to Arkansas Christian Academy. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're the ones that when you started attending Family Church Bryant, Mm -hmm. Commercial time. We'd love to invite you to join us at Family Church Bryant. We have services at 9 and 11 on Sunday morning, Wednesday night at 7. The pastor there is awesome. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Which is me. But we'd love to have you. We got something for children of all ages. 
And along with Arkansas Christian Academy, there's something going on on this campus all the time. Yes, but yes. why did y'all start coming to Family Church? Is there was there some connection? Uh, we so we had moved to a home uh, that was really close by, and I always passed this church. I was yeah. I was just curious. You said Family Church. You said Family Church. We have a family, yeah. so I was like, let's go idea. check it out. I, t I told my board in 1990, the spring of 90, we started the church Father's Day of 90, uh, the name Family Church. I just thought it was so plain. But what you just said, I've heard over and over for 32 years. Why did you come here? Well, we were looking at church for our family, and we saw mm -hmm. Family Church and said, hey, let's check it out. And here we are. That's amazing. Sir. So you guys started attending here. You started attending that young couples group as well? Yes, we did. And at what point did you hear about the ranch? Was that from the apples, the class, or announcements at church? We, we always heard the term, the ranch, thrown around. We're yeah. like, what is this ranch? Everyone yeah. talks about it. And Lena Henley would talk about it. People in our group would talk about it. And eventually we realized, okay, second chance youth ranch. Yeah. Um, that was shortly around the time where you guys were actually doing your banquet. Oh, yeah. Um, and prior to us knowing about the ranch, we had an extra bedroom in our house. And my wife and I, we had talked about fostering a child before we had any idea that that's what Family Church did. Yeah. So it was just wow. really divine. It was cool. Yeah. Yeah, and let me tell you, Family Church uh, is the church that we founded in 1990. Second Chance Youth Ranch is a 501c3 public benefit charity. Uh, all your gifts are tax deductible, but we're not looking for gifts as much as as much as the opportunity to give our life away. That's right. So mm -hmm. when people come to the church, they hear about the ranch because I was responsible for being the founder of both. Billy being the daily operations director, mm -hmm. uh, we've only got about thirty seconds. Billy, how did y'all connect uh, in regards to Andrew and his wife coming on staff? I was sitting there trying to brainstorm how that happened. Uh, you probably remember better than I would. I'm sure you just reached out to us we, after we, hearing about the banquet. We had reached out and continued to reach out to Rachel. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, we really need campus parents. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she's like, just come out to the ranch. Let's talk. And uh, when we came out to the ranch, I saw it. And I'm like... I remember you come, having that conversation. Yeah. You were mm -hmm. like, this is where I want to live. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think you, you know, y'all prayerfully and you're kind of leader of the home. Your wife's like, whatever you want to do, honey. You know, she was in sales. She was a great sales yeah. person at a pretty high reputable auto dealership in central Arkansas. Mm -hmm. And um, they just downsized and made it happen. All right, we're going to take a brief break. We'll pick up right here where they left off, where Andrew and his wife became a part of our staff helping children every day at Second Chance Youth Ranch. A mission field around you is filled with young hearts needing a forever family. And at Second Chance Youth Ranch, our team is committed to providing healthy, stable, loving homes and families to hurting children in the Arkansas foster care system and those up for adoption. Please contact us if you feel the tug at your heart to help foster or adopt and find out the steps you could take to help fulfill a child's lifelong dream. Maybe you can't foster or adopt, but you could help. The need for thousands of children in the system is staggering. But with the help of faithful partners and business alliances, we are meeting those needs right now. Would you help us make a difference? Every gift, regardless of size, impacts a child's life directly and helps provide for a home in the gap right now. Visit the Second Chance Youth Ranch website at 2CYR.org to read more, watch the stories, and to make a contribution for a hurting child's care. Monthly partners are needed, so please contact us right away. And as you partner with this ministry, you are partnering with the Heavenly Father that has promised to be Father to the fatherless. God bless you for helping Second Chance Youth Ranch. Welcome back to Second Chance Youth Ranch TV. We're with Andrew Wyatt. He and his wife are foster parents in one of our campus homes, mm -hmm. and that campus is near Perrin. And then we have our four homes right here on this campus right here in Bryant. And then our third campus is there on Smithers mm -hmm. Drive in Benton, where we're not only building one home right now, finished that home in November of 2022, we're now acquiring the property next mm -hmm. door and going to build another home there. God is moving quickly. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. So Andrew, tell me about you. You grew up, when did you meet the Lord? So I, I grew up as a pastor's kid. Okay. Um, 
unfortunately my parents ended up getting uh, separated yeah um, kind of grew up in the church I would say he really got a hold of my life really got a hold of my life my early 20s early 20s um, so tell me as a child being a pastor's kid oh that could be a bummer <laughs> you know uh, being a pastor's kid was was that difficult was that challenging uh, being I, a pastor's somewhat challenging it, it was so I was young when it happened I was about five years old when that happened so I was used to it's almost like being a little celebrity I could yeah. go and walk in all the rooms all the church oh, I, yeah. I just roam around the church and like yeah. it was like my playground oh yeah. the preacher's uh, kid yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it, I, I didn't fully understand the magnitude of it at that age yeah. um, so it maybe would have been different for my sisters who are a little older yeah but y'all stayed, you and your mom stayed there in Florida until you yes. graduated high school. Yes, we stayed at that same church until I graduated right, so high school. All right, so let's come back to the salvation experience. But okay. first, did you get married before or after your salvation experience in your early 20s? Because I don't know how old it, you are. It, you know, it, I'm, I'm 29. Okay. Um, when I met my wife while we were dating, we both started to share our experiences, um, and we grew up very similar. Oh, yeah. um, we grew up uh, going to the same style of church as yeah. well. Um, 15 minutes apart. So we lived in the same town, never met each other until we were in our 20s. Well, what, you say the same style of a church. There's different styles. What kind of style was that? Uh, it was Assemblies of God. All right, so, so y'all clapped your hands, lifted your hands. We, we did it all. And as a preacher's kid, you wandered around and went in any classroom. You also probably ran around a building or a pew or two, didn't you? <laughs> or climbing underneath the stage, <laughs> in the dark tunnels underneath the stage. It was awesome. Yeah, you got your own little, own little thing going on there. So both of y'all grew up kind of in the spirit-filled movement. Yes, we did. And then, uh, so tell me what happened in your early 20s then. Um, got married, um, started competing pretty seriously, had my kids, and I just realized I want better for my kids. Wow. I really want the Lord to lead me as a father, as a husband, because otherwise, I mean, that's tough. You're just going to constantly be treading water yeah. without them. Yeah. Billy, mm -hmm. you and Rachel, y'all, you've been the the daily operations director for how long at the ranch? 2011 years, I guess. 11 years. Y'all been at the ranch 13. 16, But you, you, Rachel used to come when she was a young girl, mm -hmm. a, a tween and a teen, because mm -hmm. uh, I used to speak in the youth all the time, and she was a part of that. And when y'all got married, when did mm -hmm. y'all get married? We got married in 2006. And y'all decided, hey, if we're going to get married and have a family, much like Andrew, mm -hmm. What was your deal? We wanted to go all in. We weren't living for the Lord, neither one of mm -hmm. us. We had that grit, good foundation, but we were like, you know, we're going to get married. Let's do this right. Yeah. Um, so and we, so she said, well, let's go to family church. That's where I used to go. Is that what happened? Sort of, yeah. It was more me try, wanting to go there. We were living in Little Rock. It's really weird. If you live in Little Rock, you don't travel to Bryant. Yeah. But if you're in Bryant, you always go to Little Rock. It's a weird deal. Yeah. Because they're country. So. She always talked about you and the youth group and, and family church. And I'm like, well, we, we tried a couple of churches in Little Rock and we we're like, ah, oh, this isn't, it's not for me. I'm like, okay, well, let's try family church. So we drove from, we lived downtown Little Rock in a loft apartment, drove to family church. And I remember sitting back row left, you know, for last one in, first one out, yep. you know, for about six months. Yep. Um, and I just remember the very first message and I heard you, and I told Rachel, this is our church. Uh, I think it was the way, like I, I addressed it the last session, you know, Jesus, the Bible is so great about s explaining something so complicated yeah. in an easy way. Yeah. And that's how you talk from the pulpit. It's yeah, something I, I, could, I could understand. People say, well, you just make it so simple. I said, that's because God made it simple yeah. so I could get it. And all I'm doing is telling you what I received. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I was like, this is, yeah. this is us. So. But I, I don't know how many people know the testimony. Your dad, where did he grow up, Billy? He grew up in Boys Town in Memphis. In at Memphis. the age of 8 to 18, he was taken away from his, phone, his, his parents due to abuse yeah. and um, was raised in Boys Town in Memphis. So this, this is something that was deeply ingrained in your genealogy almost. It was. He, yeah. he didn't really want to talk about those years. I think they may have did things a little bit differently. He never told me he loved me or he was proud of me, but I knew he did both. Yeah. Um, so it's really important for me to know that history and really to break that generational curse for the kids that come here. 
So I've got two guys here on the set, two men of God, God yep. who recognize that if we're going to have a family, mm -hmm. and boy, isn't that a controversial subject today, a family, a man, a woman, mm -hmm. and children, mm -hmm. uh, that if we're, going to, if we're going to do this, we need to do it right. That's right. And mm -hmm. uh, some seeds have been planted in both of you where if we're going to do it right, we've got to get on God's, mm -hmm. on God's system because God's system works. God created the family for long before He created any other mm -hmm. institution or what we'd call an institution. In the beginning, God right. created man and woman. A uh, preacher from Virginia said many years ago, Jerry Falwell, which irritates some people, he said God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know that was always offensive to some and humorous to others, but I don't think it's any more applicable than it is right now today mm -hmm. as we air this show. God has a plan. Mm -hmm. The Bible says the ways of man end in death. There's a way that seems right, mm -hmm. but the ways are death. But God has a plan. And you know what? God's plans work. Mm -hmm. You know, in our automobiles, we've got an owner's manual. The light comes on, we open it up and says, oh, you need to go get this serviced, or you need to get an oil change, mm -hmm. you need to have your tires checked. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an owner's manual. The creator of the universe Mm -hmm. who took a handful of dirt and spoke life and breathed life into it. And uh, that's who we are. Mm -hmm. And if you're watching right now and you're wondering, how can I get my life to work, my family to work? How can I get my family to, to come together? Give God a chance. That's what these guys have done, and that's what we do every day. So. We're praying for you. We're going to take a brief break. We'll be right back. Me, I'm good at basketball. I'm part of that. I mean, nobody can tell me I'm not good at basketball. Like, can I have that basketball? That basketball is good. My name is Brandon. I'm 15. I like to play football and basketball. Draw, listen to music, and read. I think my favorite book is um, Stephen King's books. I like all his books. Even, even my thing, my favorite one is it or the you that sleep in beauty. I did, my favorite subject is math. I'm really good at that. When my teacher yells at me most of the time, but then after she yells at me, I do do what she says and I appreciate the help that she gives me. I want to be in the NFL, the NBA. Lakers is uh, my favorite basketball and. Which my my team to make it my team to make it last year, which was the Chiefs, but but it made it a year before that and a year before that. If you could pick anywhere in the world, where would you want to go? China, cause they got the best way. Cause New Year's Day, they like have a realistic wheel and water and rocket ship shooting up in the sky and stuff, and it's like everything looks real. Like you see the wheel, you see the water, and it's like a projector that they don't even know is there. And you see it goes down, the wheel goes down, and it splashes in the water, and it looks like it actually went in there. That's why I said China got the best tech in the world. If I could have a pet, I'd be a, have, it'd be a panda. So I could have something to hug, something, something to play with, something to feed, something to show off there, but I have a panda. Like, I have a panda, everybody. Well, when I first got to the facility, which is 10 months ago, then I was angry for a couple of weeks. Didn't talk to nobody. I was non-compliant. And then, and then I just snapped and said, hey, it's not right. You shouldn't take it out of everybody because it's not fair because they ain't the one who did it to you. So instead of me getting mad, breaking stuff, or getting mad, cursing, or fighting or anything like that, you just, I go to ask, can I step out, go to my room, I go to my room, I do something. I go to my room, listen to music, and come back and we could talk again. That's what I do, and I'll be calm. I think my life would be better if I went in facility because the longer I stay in that facility, the more I, the more I fall down and become back in my old ways. I, like, I lost hope and say I ain't got nowhere to go, so what's the point of me trying to behave? I want to be a doctor because I want to go to college and have a good home. Somebody that could, that could love me and treat me like I'm supposed to be treated, not like in a facility. Somebody that's going to care enough not to give up to today, to give up to the time I start getting upset or using my anger. 
somebody can help me through that. And then I can actually learn to do better. Have a second chance in life. Hey, welcome back. You know, this show is designed primarily to keep foster care right out here every week, letting you know across the Victory Television Network audience that you are needed, that you are a gift from God, and God has given a gift to you and us, and His name's Jesus, and we want you to know Him. I know it's late at night, but you need to know Jesus and he has a special plan for your life. It's easy to look at television and go, man, these guys got it all together. Uh, well, <laughs> God keeps it together, that's, that's right. even though go. we're like a cat playing with a ball of twine. We're just messing it up all the time, but God just keeps making this work. Andrew mm -hmm. Wyatt is our guest today. He's our, one of our foster families, he and his wife. Uh, Y'all been married how long now? Six years. Six years, and you've been on staff at the ranch as a foster family for how long? I think we're coming right on a year. Right on a year. Uh, Billy's been doing this 13 years. I've been doing a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's it like being a foster dad? Just have more kids. How many children <laughs> do you have, you and your wife? We have three. You have three. Yes. And then how many foster children were we gracious enough to let you have? Up until last week, I had four. Yeah. One of them, uh, he went home recently. Did he get to go back to be restored to his family? Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yes, let's did. celebrate. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's awesome. awesome. That's really our number one go uh, is to reunite, a re reunite the family. Mm -hmm. Unification mm -hmm. is of utmost importance to us. You know, with the Roe versus Wade mm -hmm. issue with the Supreme Court, so many people criticizing said, well, you, you conservatives or you Christians, you only care about saving the baby. You don't want to help after the baby's born. Uh, hold that right there. Mm -hmm. Is that true, Billy? That's true. That's what people say. Mm -hmm. But what are we building right now as this show is airing? We are finishing or just finished a pregnancy home mm -hmm. right here mm -hmm. in Bryant for at least four girls pregnant out of wedlock and we're not there just to let them have a baby. We're there to help That's them right. mm -hmm. as long as they need us mm -hmm. to support them in raising that baby. That's right. So that's what that's what this ministry is about. Mm -hmm. That's what you're watching. Now, Andrew, that's what you're a part of. Even though you're not at the pregnancy center, you've got currently three children plus your own three. Mm -hmm. Been married how many years? Six years. Six years, and you got six kids? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Billy and Rachel, they took that when y'all came into the ranch. Uh, Y'all had been married how many months? Six months. Six months. And how many teenage girls did we give you? Seven. <laughs> Instant family. <laughs> and when you came, you had a full head of hair like Elvis? Yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> it's amazing what happens. But it's just, it's a joy, and it is a lot of work. Let me see your blisters. Y'all got blisters? Right, look at that. That was from yeah. yesterday. Nice. Yeah. Faith without blisters is dead. <laughs> this past weekend, uh, I'm trying to relax, and I look on Facebook, and y'all got New Life Church, mm -hmm. and they have 40-some people out there painting buildings and mm -hmm. cooking burgers, and man, it's just joyous, mm -hmm. just joyous. So, Andrew, tell us, we got about four minutes in this segment. Okay. What's it like being a foster dad to come into a home, and you've got foster children, and y'all are having to meet one another, assimilate your children with them? I grew up in that, so mm -hmm. to me it was just normal. Mm -hmm. uh, we could have fielded a baseball team. We had so many kids in my house. One time we had 19, so I don't know why Daddy drank. I really don't. Uh, so what's it like? Um, it, it's a little different, but it's also very similar um, to raising my own kids. Yeah. Uh, when I first got my group, you could tell they're filling me out at first. They, they want to know if my wife and I, if we're sincere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then with time, as you build trust. And did they try to push you away to prove that you really didn't love them? Did you have any of that interaction going on? Verbally with one of mine, no, but she would just shut down. Yeah. And so that was her way of tuning out and pushing away. It was just totally shutting down. Shut down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Isolate. 
Yep. Isolate and insulate. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. what they do. Um, but it's incredible to see from when we first got her to now, just like the restoration. How old is she? How old is she? Yeah. She's 12. 12. Did she get baptized Sunday? She did get baptized mm-hmm. on Sunday. Beautiful long hair. Yes. yes. African-American girl. Yes. yes. And to watch her, she's at Arkansas Christian Academy. Yes, she uh, is. Uh, which is another part of our ministry. Mm-hmm. Uh, to watch them blossom. Mm-hmm. Isn't it? It's a challenge mm-hmm. because they will test you every way possible. <laughs> But to watch them begin to open up, let down the walls. What mm-hmm. a joy. Oh, it's absolutely incredible. And I, she, got, uh, I got her picture. Where's my phone? I got a picture <laughs> in my phone of her getting baptized. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's awesome. And I talked mm-hmm. to her this week. And re- reunification is her goal, is to go back yeah. with Grandma. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think she's a little confused. You know, they, they were living in New Orleans. But she says, I just wish, I, I want to go home, but I wish I could take the ranch and the school with me. Oh, gosh. Mm-hmm. Man, that's awesome. You know, uh, Arkansas Christian Academy, I had a parent contact me Friday, mm-hmm. contact us, and I got a copy of the, said uh, due to all that's been going on the last couple of years, her child in mm-hmm. elementary school, first year here at Arkansas Christian Academy, came in counseling on medication, anxiety, and mm-hmm. depression, mm-hmm. and said Friday, she's out of counseling, she's off of her meds, it's a brand new girl. Great, that's awesome. Uh, our heart is so important, but so much so our environment too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we work so hard to find loving families like yours that will love children that aren't theirs as if they are. Right. And that's the joy of it. That's why we keep going. We have opportunities right now on our campus, Billy. We need mm-hmm. a full-time maintenance person. We do. A uh, pretty nice job mm-hmm. being around making a difference through talent and, uh, that mm-hmm. you have and the skills that you've been given. And we also need, don't we have a home right now on campus where Andrew and his wife are? We do. Uh, that we could bring in four to six more siblings. We do. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that job's, uh, man, we need that. Mm-hmm. And the new house in Benton, it's about $250,000 house, brand new. Mm-hmm. It's going to be uh, enough for four to six more foster mm-hmm. children. We're looking for a foster family for that. Mm-hmm. We may have located the foster family mm-hmm. for the Girls' Pregnancy Crisis Center that will be finished around awesome. Christmas mm-hmm. time. So this is your opportunity. And you say, well, I can't do that. Do you have an extra bedroom? If you have an extra bedroom, mm-hmm. we'd love to connect with our placement agency with Billy and Rachel and uh, give you an opportunity. Uh, Andrew can tell you it's challenging but is it, is it rewarding? Absolutely. Would you do it again? I'll keep doing it. Will you do it mm-hmm. for another year? I'll do it for another year. If not, year. I'll shoot you with a paintball. <laughs> God bless you. Thanks for watching this show. You know, this show, we just want to tell you that we love you. We partner with you. We honor Victory Television Network and the Caldwells for being a part of what we're doing. We look forward to seeing you again right here next week. Bye-bye.